Gucci is Gucci. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why Gucci, why pretending to be rich can actually make you freaking whack and poor. Let's get into it. So my name is Ron Balufa and I've, helped, I've flipped over 500 homes, whether it's wholesale deals, fix and flips, buy rentals, single families, multifamilies, a little bit of everything. And I'm here to help you do the same and accomplish your goals. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how pretending to be rich actually makes you suck. If you're watching this YouTube video, it's probably because you watch other YouTube videos, which is awesome. And I wanna illustrate a point. So I'm gonna go into my screen real quick and show you how the Ace family foreclose on their $10 million mansion by pretending to be rich. And then I'm gonna talk about why do we pretend? How do we use this pretentious life of, of being rich to your advantage and how you can make a game out of it to reverse the script, to flip the script and you end up on top while achieving the maximum amount of success. So let's jump into my screen here. By the way, my mom gave me this. I love her. She loves to give me fancy things. I have two pairs of nice shoes and I have one nice scarf. They're all gifts from my mother every Christmas. <laughs> I love her so much. All right, love you, Ma. All right, so let's go in here. And this is an article I found and Ryan Pineda makes a really good video about the Ace Family. He goes really deep into it. But all in all, Ace Family is a family that got famous on YouTube and they have really cool videos about them and their family just living life and doing cool stuff. And as you can see here, they bought a huge mansion here, there's a picture right here. And it was sick, right? I saw the video, my, my girlfriend watches this channel and I actually think they're great YouTubers. They, they seem like very genuine and they're good, you know, good YouTubers and this is nothing about them. However, they bought this $10 million home and when you look deeply into it, it shows that they got two loans for this home. They got like a regular loan and they also got a private or hard money loan. And what that means is that they bought this house with none of their own cash, which might be smart, if you're buying a good deal. They bought a $10 million house that's not worth it because they're trying to sell it at auction and no one wants to buy this house. They didn't put any of their money, probably because they didn't have any. Basically, they just pretended this whole time on YouTube and all this stuff to have money. Maybe they have some money stashed at somewhere. You know, I'm sure they're not poor, like completely. What I'm getting at here is like, look at this chain. This chain probably like 100 grand, earrings. This house is 10 million bucks, but they can't even afford it. Okay, if you're losing your home, that's one of like the most... This is a huge investment in most people's lives. And if you're losing your home, it's, it's. I mean, you don't wanna do that, okay? Especially like a beautiful home like this. This shows me that they don't they don't have enough money to pay the mortgage. They don't have enough money to save it or pay it off or or they don't have good enough credit to be able to work on this and like, <laughs> like fix this issue. And besides that, so Austin actually started a, a um, like fight night type thing for YouTubers and TikTokers and influencers to fight. He did an event and didn't even pay back the fighters. Okay, they're in a ton of lawsuits. They're being sued for probably way more than what they have because if you have money and you're being sued, yes, you can fight because of ego and like get into the courtroom battle and all this stuff. But typically like most really, really wealthy people just pay for that stuff to go away. You know, either settle or whatever, pay people off, especially if they're in the wrong. Like this guy hosted fights, fighters fought and didn't get paid like that. It's not, like you can't make that up. So. Anyways, this is just an illustration of pretending to be rich. People you probably know, probably seen on YouTube or your girlfriend or your boyfriend watches this or a family member. And here I have like a little breakdown. As you can see, I'm very, uh, <laughs> I like to write stuff on my little Google doc. And I'm gonna go over how pretending to be rich actually makes you suck. So there's the Ace Family story. So why do we pretend? Why do we pretend to be rich? Why do we front on Instagram? Why do we buy cars we can't afford? Why do we buy houses we can't afford, boats and, uh, why do we buy clothing <laughs> that we can't afford? Very simple. It's just to impress people we don't like. That's the, the key word there is impress. Sometimes people are like, no, but I don't care about what people say. I actually like the Ferrari or I actually like Gucci or I actually like Louis Vuitton. Okay, bro. If that Ferrari actually costs a lot less, yeah, it could be that you really love the engineering of the car or something. However, when you really dive deep, if you ask them why seven times, there will be another person involved. Oh, I like the feeling of when I'm driving it and I pull up and, you know, and then like I give the keys to the valet guy and, and I feel good. It's like, why you feel good, man? Well, uh, the, so there's nothing wrong with buying fancy cars at all. I actually have a Porsche <laughs> that I'm about to pay off, but at the time I could afford it. I still could afford it. So is it a shitty purchase? Yes, it's still a shitty purchase. I'm not compensating for it. However, it wasn't something completely out of my budget at the time. So why do we pretend? Like, why do we pretend? It's typically to impress other people and to feel a certain way, feel more superior, 
feel something. You know, for, for a long time I battled with this because I I used to buy nice things. I owned many Rolexes before and I owned fancy shoes and things like that. And um, after about, about probably like two and a half years ago, I went to that realization. I'm like, ah, I don't need any of this stuff. Like, why do I have 15 grand on my wrist? Like, why? Like, I don't even care. Like, I like I like my, my Rolex has never even worked. I didn't know the time. Like, <laughs> the time never worked. I'm like, dude, why am I doing this? Like, this is whack. I, I found myself whack, you know? And I'm not saying people with Rolexes are whack. I just, I cared about different things at that point. I said, I'm like, I'll buy myself another Rolex when I have 15 net, $15,000 a month net coming in in assets. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there yet. So when that happens, in my real estate portfolio, then I'll buy myself a Rolex. So I just care, I just prioritize things differently. And I think you should think about it. You don't have to follow my strategy. However, you should not freaking pretend and to be rich and buy fancy shit for people you don't even like. If you really think about it, the people that most people are trying to impress is a valet driver, uh, you know, other women, other men, you know, friends of friends. Cause like the real people that love you, typically don't care about that shit, right? If you're worth a couple million bucks and then you're poor and then you get poor, your friends are probably gonna ask like, yo, are you all right? Did something happen? But they're not gonna care that you had a $10,000 Rolex and now you have a $300 Seiko. So how do you use this to your advantage to win the game? So number one, let's make it a game. Make this, make this thing about pretending and about money and about spending. Make this all a game. Make this all a game. Don't take it too seriously. What I mean by that is if you feel that you're not winning, it's probably because you're playing the wrong game. So let's, let me dive into that. The goal is to be happy with less. There's a really good book called Stop Acting Rich. I've talked about it in another video, just finished reading it. It's the same author as The Millionaire Next Door. So the two books I'd recommend if you like this topic is The Millionaire Next Door and Stop Acting Rich, okay? And in that book, it talks about basically the premise is one word and that word is enough. There was like a conversation with a, uh, I don't think it was in this book, but um, the premise of this whole thing that I'm talking about was there was a conversation with two gentlemen in a gala or like a fundraiser. And one guy was worth like 200 million. The other guy was worth a billion. And there was somebody talking to him and, and he's like, Hey, like, what do you think about the, the billionaire over there? He's like, he's like, I have one thing. I have one thing he doesn't have. And that's enough. I don't need more money. I don't need more of this. I don't need more toys. I don't need more, more cars. I don't need more houses and fancy shit. I have enough. So you have to determine what is enough for you. Everyone has a different answer. And really, really, really think about it. For a long time, I wanted to, I wasn't gonna stop until I made 100 million bucks. And that still is my goal, don't get me wrong. When you really, really think about it, I don't need 100 million bucks to be, you know, living like, like a complete, you know, top, top, top of the chain, however I wanna think, you know. Um, you don't need that much money. So I really think about what is enough for you. What is it that you want to want to want to do? So typically buying stuff makes you happy or satisfied, whether it's buying um, anything, buying clothes. A lot of people spend their money on clothes, artwork, jewelry, um, rings, chains, uh, anything, right? I understand that buying this stuff can make you happy, but the goal would be is then you're really just buying a feeling. You're searching for a feeling. You're buying a Ferrari because you want to feel something. Notice in the beginning, if you really ask somebody why five to seven times about a purchase that they bought, that's pretty high end, maybe a little bit above, maybe a stretch, ask them why a couple times. And it's typically a feeling is the underlying thing. So that's good. So now if we know the core, the root is a feeling, right? People buy Gucci to feel superior. People buy Gucci to feel exclusive. People buy Gucci to feel um, rich. People buy Gucci to feel like they're a part of like this society that can only afford this kind of shit. So really, if we're searching a feeling, then we have to think about what can we do in our lives to feel that way without spending that, okay? So you just have to transfer. It's not that we don't want you to feel that. We're just gonna transfer what it takes for you to feel that, okay? So instead of buying a Ferrari, to feel rich and powerful and important, there's other things you could do to feel that. So when you flip the script, you got this. Be happy and feel rich, feel powerful when you invest in something. And it could be as simple as investing a hundred bucks into whatever you want, okay? I'm not, this is not like an investing advice channel, but you can invest a hundred bucks into a crypto, into a stock, into you know someone's real estate deal, into someone's business. I, don't, I mean, I don't know a business would take a hundred bucks, but you know what I mean? You know, like there's apps that you can invest like Robinhood or Betterment or Acorn. Like you can invest 50 bucks. You should feel, you could feel important, rich in a secret society, high status, 
when you do that. And it actually has more merit, and more meaning. Because, you know, if you invest $100 today in 30 years, compounded, et cetera, you could do the math. It's worth like, I don't know, $8,000 or some shit like that. Um, you could use a Dave, Dave Ramsey retirement calculator. That's what I use. And plug in some numbers and you will be astonished of the things that you see there. So when you invest in something, that can make you feel the same feeling as, as buying this Gucci thing. A lot of people are like, oh, I invest in this Rolex. It's an investment, so they feel good. And, you know, whatever. There's a little bit of merit to that nowadays. But, <laughs> but overall, let's be real. A $20,000 investment in a Rolex or $20,000 investment in your brain, meaning a course, a mentor, or your future, a real estate deal, a something that can pay you dividends, that's a lot better investment. Okay, let's, let's be real. Okay. Be happy, feel important, feel rich when you save money. After reading the book, um, Stop Acting Rich, I realized like, damn, like I'm still spending too much money on stupid shit, it doesn't matter. And I don't buy fancy shit, but like, I like to go out to eat in nice places. Um, I like to buy good food, you know, like I, I really spend a lot on food. I like to go to nice gyms, or I used to. I was paying like $300 a month, well, 270 bucks a month for a gym membership, which I canceled after like reading that book, I'm like, okay. Let me just go to the regular gym for 30 bucks a month. Like, what the heck do I need 270? So even me, all of us, we all go through this. But if you're aware that all you're searching for is a feeling, you can get this feeling doing other things that are actually productive. So when you save money, right? So I was paying 270, now I'm paying 30. So I'm saving 200 plus dollars a month now. I felt so rich, <laughs> okay? When I made that decision and I canceled the membership, I sent them the email and I signed up to the cheaper gym, I was like, dude, that felt good. Like, I felt like I just bought the biggest Gucci scarf in the store. That's how I felt. Be happy when you see your friend spending more than you. So, okay. <laughs> I don't like comparing to anybody. So don't mistake this. But a lot of times our purchases and our investing habits, our spending habits are fueled by our friendships. There's nothing wrong with that. Hopefully if you have high net worth friends or friends that are making money, it's good. It's good for you. It's good for you to understand like, okay, you made a hundred grand and you spent 20,000 on this vacation or this, that, whatever. It happens. If you can go on the same vacation and spend less money than them, you should feel good about yourself. You should feel that feeling of being more rich or feeling uh, more successful and stuff. Not more successful than them, more successful than you were before you went on this trip or before you did that habit. So if people, if you say you're for everyone in your friend group is getting a new laptop and they paid 3000 bucks for the laptop, but you found yours refurbished on offer up for 1900 same laptop used for three months by a dude that had to sell it because he was moving or something. Well, man, you should feel good. Like you, you accomplish the same and with spending less. So you literally invested in your future, you invest in yourself. Like you, you did something that put you in a more secret society you know, of, of savers, of investors, of people that actually get wealthy. Write down the smallest things you have and what you're grateful for. So every morning I have this notebook, literally a five-star notebook. I sit here in the mornings and for four minutes, I literally timed it for four minutes because five was felt too long for me. And I write down what I'm grateful for in two columns, okay? And it's a simple practice, but what it does is that it amplifies your feelings and your happiness without spending. So I'm making more money than ever now in the last year. And I have spent, I have spent the least amount and I am probably the happiest. Don't get me wrong. I just went on vacation. It cost me $20,000 in Europe. <laughs> it was a splurge. Um, every once in a while, buy me a nice thing. I bought my girlfriend a you know, $500 pair of glasses. So don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't spend or you should not have to spend or enjoy your money. It's not the feeling that makes me feel, it's not, what, it's not the only thing that makes me feel rich or happy or successful or, or like, you know, powerful or something. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. You don't have to. And actually the real successful people don't need that. Don't need that. If you really meet millionaires, a lot of them are billionaires or multimillionaires. Like a lot of them, a lot of them, more than them, don't wear fancy watches too much. They don't wear gold chains or jewelry or a lot of these people that do it like hip hop um, art or artists or celebrities like that, they do it for, cause it's also part of their brand. So it's almost like an investment for them, how they see it. Think about it. A lot of these people are the broke, okay? The people who have investments and live rich forever, not a lot of them spend and splurge on this kind of stuff. If you, once you start learning that, it'll help you. Um, so make it a game to invest and save more. Play a game for the next month. How much money can you save and invest? Like, let's just play this game. It's one month of your life. Just do it two weeks. Let's say you're used to spending $500 a week on food and working. 
how can you spend 250? Like just make it a game and see who can do it. Maybe you live with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, husband, wife, make it a game. And um, another thing is uh, make offers and ask for negotiations and ask for discounts, make offers and find deals, vacation, restaurants. So every time I go on vacation now, if I know uh, I'm going to, for instance, I just went to Tulum, I knew that I was going to Tulum. So a couple days before, I just started messaging people on Airbnb asking for discounts. So you see, I'm like, hey, I know you're asking for 200 a night. Would you do 120 a night if I book it right now? Very simple. And I would say like, if you make enough offers, eight at a time, eight out of 10, it works. So you just have to make enough offers. It happened when I went to Italy in the Amalfi Coast, it was a beautiful thing. And I'm like, crap, everything in the Amalfi is expensive by the way, okay? So I was like, I like to, you know, I like to spend money when I'm on vacation, it's fine, enjoy it. And I'm like, man, how can I get the best deal, right? Like, how can I, I feel good when I save money. I feel good when I know I get a good deal. And so what I did was, I just made 10 offers on 10 different Airbnbs and actually on the most beautiful one, the one I actually wanted, they accepted, I think it was like 180 off per night and we were there for like four nights. So it's a lot of money. I don't know, I felt like if I bought a freaking Ferrari, okay? I felt like if I just went to the fanciest restaurants in all of Italy. And if you can kind of train yourself to think about it a little differently and feel good when you save, invest, get a good deal, you know, um, do something productive, then you don't have to pretend to be rich. You'll actually be rich and you won't be poor and you won't be whack as hell. <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. Really, I do these videos to help you achieve your goals in real estate or in life. Get ahead, get a little bit above the competition so you can crush it and do your best at a young age, an old age, it doesn't matter. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Caucasian, anything. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. Please hit that like, subscribe, share this with a friend, a family member. Please, please, please. If you feel it's valuable for somebody, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.